Welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I am featuring an homage piece from homage brand Pagani Design. Now Pagani of course have uh, sent quite a few pieces. I've had the pleasure to review some of their, their better homages. This one is an homage of an Amiga and the one I'm wearing nonetheless one of my very favorite pieces and I was really quite keen to get my hands on this to see how it measures up or not. Uh, now it does come in their typical simple black packaging so not the more special square one which they uh, have designed the first thing they designed in quite a while actually so they've, they've stuck to the old one for this so without further ado guys let's flip it around and take a closer look at this piece all right guys so here we have the classic simple black pagani design packaging on the table spinability of today's case is I guess it's all right, it's at least a three and a half. This one is a little bit more grippy than some. So it's not the most spinny of their cases. Uh, you know, microfiber, cleaning cloth. Uh, that is the watch in there, of course. I'm just gonna put it aside uh, and just show you. So there's, you know, my spare links inside there. I've chucked it on the side. Uh, removed about four uh, on this watch. You know, a little bit more of an upgrade uh, of the tag to make you feel as if you're getting something slightly more. Uh, for the same price or thereabouts. Uh, manual, I'm not going to go through that because you've seen that already in my previous uh, iterations of Pagani Design. And then a pretend uh, warranty card. So pretend brand, pretend warranty card. Uh, I like it how at the bottom here it says, uh, this warranty is no valid in case of accident or undue opening. So interesting to read that because I think this warranty is no valid uh, whatever the case is anyway. So anyway, you're gonna put that aside and grab the watch here to show it to you guys closer. And it is a pretty good looking one. So this is the Pagani Design Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 150, except it's not 150 water resistant. PD1688 is the model number. Uh, the, the, the acquisition price is around $110, 110 USD as I checked it just a moment ago. And of course, product links down the bottom uh, for you guys to check out the versions and stores selling this online if you wish to explore it uh, a little bit more. Okay, so let's just uh, quickly move on to the movement. Uh, not gonna spend a whole lot of time in this. You guessed it, it is the NH35A, none other than that. Uh, it is, uh, you know, I guess reasonably well regulated in this case, plus 10 seconds per day in the one week that I have had this running. So that's acceptable uh, in my book. Uh, the quick set date is a white disc with black writing on the three o'clock position. So they have actually, looks like they've just left the default Seiko NH35 disc in there, which is, I think they could have done better, but you know, it is what it is. They left the white disc at the three o'clock position here. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about the case here. The case here is absolute copy of the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 41 millimeter. So it is 41 millimeter diameter. The bezel is 40 millimeters, as is the real thing. Uh, slightly thinner than the real thing. It is actually 12, so the real thing is actually closer to 13. This is a 12 millimeter thickness uh, to the top of the glass there. 20 millimeter lugs, of course, and then 47.5 millimeter lug to lug distance between my thumbs, which is, you know, again, same as the real thing. Slightly lighter than the Omega at 132 grams with my wrist size adjustment on this bracelet. The Omega is about 10 or 12 grams heavier. So, and you, you do feel that difference if you hold it side by side. 132 is actually not too insubstantial. It's actually, it's certainly, I feel this and it's a very, I think it's a comfortable middle weight is what I feel about the 130 uh, range grams of weight. Finishing wise, uh, I have to say, they tried to copy everything. It's not quite as refined, but it is what it is. Polish on the bezel, circular brushing in the, that little triangle position of the lug there. Uh, they've done the no lug actually pretty pretty well. That no lug is actually not uh, badly done at all. Polished there. Horizontal uh, or longitudinal brushing on the sides. Uh, polish on the bottom surface of the lugs. And then polished bevel with circular brush display case back, which is actually a screw down case back. So, you know, good on them for 
you know, giving us some of these provisions, including screw down case back and a screw down sign crown, right? At least the signage is actually not too bad as well. So screw down crown, they've actually rated this 100 meters, which I, th I think it's slightly disappointing to me because they could have quite easily pushed another 50 meters and then it would be the same as the real thing. Why not do that? You know, why not just give us another 50 meters? Surely that is not too difficult to do. Anyway, that's just my feeling about this. So moving on to the DAL, which is of course uh, very heavily inspired, some might say knocked off of the real thing. Uh, satin sunburst DAL, this is blue, it's not quite as muted blue as the real thing, uh, but it does have that teak texture, you know, that decking, which is supposed to remind you of the luxury yacht that you own. Or maybe you don't, I certainly don't, but I think that's the implication here. Applied logo, applied indices, printed words and chapter ring around the periphery. Kind of just like the real thing, except the real thing does have an applied Omega word there. The hands are fully polished, right? So you're getting that uh, simple baton for the hour. You're getting arrow minute and arrow seconds, or at least a kind of more stylized arrow. For the seconds hand, it's blue loom and it's there on all the expected spots, including all three hands of this style. Loom shot right here, of course, to let you guys check it out. Look at that glow in the dark. Okay, on top of the dial, we have uh, a dome sapphire. So I'm glad they at least put in the dome sapphire and that the real thing is dome. This one is not quite as high dome, but it's actually a very subtle dome. So hardly any distortion, so I assume it's a double dome. Very, very subtle dome there, and I don't mind that. At least they've actually got a dome rather than putting in a flat, which wouldn't have been too impressing. I would I would have been uh, quite upset, actually, if they just put a flat in here, and they didn't, so good on them. Moving on to the bracelet. Okay, so three-piece polish in the middle, otherwise it's all brushing, including the side surface there. It's got solid end links that you can see there. Uh, they've actually gone for screw adjustment, so good on them for putting screw adjustment. But to be honest, this screw is very darn difficult to undo. It has been, it's a bit of a dog to undo actually. And some of this, I've actually damaged the head and given up. So I had to kind of work around the ones that I could actually get out and just be aware. You know, if you get this watch, some of these screws are very, very, very tight and you, you can well stuff it up if you're not careful. All right, but they have given the screw links. It does taper to 18 millimeters from 20 millimeter at the case here. Uh, the push button release class is that they've actually tried to mimic the real thing. It doesn't quite match it, but you know, it's kind of an asymmetric butterfly. You can see this side is more towards the middle. And then this one's just a friction release, kind of mimicking the real thing, but not quite, uh, you know, not quite there in terms of refinement, definitely quite far away from it. All right, so that's really what this is. It doesn't have any half links, unfortunately. Uh, they didn't give any half links. They didn't, it doesn't come with any micro adjustments. So this might be a bit annoying if you happen to fit just at the wrong size. I think I am slightly wrong on this clasp, not completely 100% happy with the fit. But anyway, I'm gonna snap it on the wrist and show it to you guys now. So there we go, Pagani 1688, the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra on my 17 centimeter wrist. Uh, you know, the real thing fits me very well on my favorite watches and definitely this fits well also. That's how it looks like on the bracelet. Remember 40 millimeter, 41 millimeter case, I should say, 47.5 millimeter lug to lug. Fits me absolutely fine and the thinness is not bad at 12 millimeters. Okay, so you guys probably know I have the real thing and it's right here. It is one of my favorite watches. How does this actually compare side by side? I think there is absolutely no question, uh, you know, where the inspiration comes from. There is also absolutely no question that the refinement of the Amiga, you know, is, is absolutely miles ahead and it should be, right? Because this is many, many times the cost, uh, the depth of the dial, the finishing of the hands, uh, the, the fit of the bracelet, the, the fineness of the, the brushing and the polishing. Of course, it's going to be heads and shoulders above the Pagani. Nothing in this watch, no aspect of it holds a candle at all to the Amiga. But, you know, on the surface, right, a watch that is, uh, you know, a three-handed date that tells the time, that gives the style of the Amiga, copied style, mind you, but gives the style of the Amiga, 
can function as an everyday watch because you know it is after all uh, 100 meter water resistance so and with a screw down crown I have no doubt about taking this uh, underwater that's absolutely fine in my book okay so but you know th does it actually hold a candle to this not at all this movement this movement is probably the best 300 date movement in the world for my money you know I really do feel uh, that this is just about the best movement in the world for that function uh, you know so is it you know, I, I paid about 30 times the price of the Pagani for this one. At, at the time I bought this, I thought I got a pretty good deal. I, I do believe that. Is this 30 times better? Maybe not, but I reckon it's probably about 20 times better. But this is about you know 2% of the price for, for the current price. So the value proposition is definitely there, you know, for, for the knockoff brand that Pagani is. It gives you 90% or at least 80% of the looks, you know, the same function for a very, very small fraction of a price. This is what they are giving you here. Fantastic value, Aquaterra, 150 millimeter homage at 100 meter water resistance, which is fine. It's probably, you know, fine for 99% uh, of us watch wearers, you know, in my audience here. Uh, it's got good enough specs, Sapphire, Seiko movement, all right loom. It kind of just lasts through the night adequate uh, bracelet and clasps right just adequate you know the, the it's a bit jangly so you know it's it kind of just possible in this particular respect what are the weaknesses here i have to say again just like their date just just like their rolex submariners they have visibly imperfect finish right you can see the brushing if you look closely is wavy right the transition between polish and brush is not quite sharp it's really just a less refined dial, uh, you know, compared to the real thing. There's no, not much depth here. I think their Rolex dials are better. This is just not quite there. The bracelet as well, their, their oyster bracelets and oyster clasps are better, uh, you know, in terms of the knockoff they've done. This one is not quite there. It's almost as if they're still working on it. It's not quite as good as their Rolex copies. Ultimately, of course, an homage design. And if you don't like homage, then this is definitely not the watch for you this is not the brand for you okay guys i think that's enough of me you know gas bagging here let's flip the camera around for the wrap up so there you go guys my review of the pagani design aqua terra copy or homage let me know what you think about this piece uh, or in fact if you uh, have gone out to get it uh, because look i think whilst uh, uh, it does have its flaws it's definitely far from perfect uh, for a hundred dollars though, uh, for the look that it gives you is pretty compelling value. I think they do seem to be proving to be the forefront of this particular price range. I've said that before. And I think this, uh, you know, certainly adds to their stature, uh, you know, at this budget level for the specs that they do seem to be able to pack into these pieces. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.